Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you another creator tips video. Today we are going to focus on tips for posting specifically on Instagram. I've learned all of these myself by doing research and I've used them on my own account, which has led to Instagram growth, a higher engagement rate, and creating content that's valuable to my audience. A few things before we get into the video, but make sure to subscribe if you end up liking this video at the end, of course. Check out my Instagram for all of the content that I post on there. And if you wanna see more creator tip videos like this one, I will leave a bunch of different videos down below helping you guys grow your Instagram and create an Instagram account that you are dreaming of. Okay, so the first set of tips, we are going to be talking about size. If you didn't know, on Instagram, there is a certain posting size that is really great to maximize your posting. When you post on Instagram, if you haven't noticed, when you post a really small landscape picture, it only takes up about this much of your Instagram feed. The best Instagram posting size is actually a four to five ratio. Keep that in mind when you are taking Instagram photos, when you are editing Instagram photos, and when you are cropping Instagram photos. When you post an Instagram four to five ratio, you are allowing your photo to take up the maximum size on the feed. That way when somebody's scrolling through your feed, they will be more likely to engage and react to that photo because they're seeing a lot of it. It's not as easy to kind of slide right past it and not realize that you posted something. What I like to do to plan out my Instagram posts, I actually use Visco. Now I know there are a lot of apps out there that people use and like to use to plan out their content, but what I like to do on Visco is crop my photo to a four to five ratio just to make sure I know what it's gonna look like when it hits the feed as well as what it looks like when it's gonna become a square on my account. So going back to what I said before about making sure you're aware of that four to five ratio when you're taking pictures, when you're taking pictures, you wanna make sure you have enough buffer room on the sides. So this white space would be technically the buffer. Usually I turn my camera vertical and I will make sure that I have enough buffer around my photo so that when I do crop it I can get exactly what I want in that photo and I'm not cropping my head or any objects in the background or my feet or anything depending on what the picture is. You might actually end up cropping something you didn't want to crop but you might be able to fix it if you go into Photoshop. You can use the rubber stamp tool or you can even kind of crop the side of the picture and extend it out to make it look like it has more buffer on the side just so it's easier to crop it to a four to five. I've done that with a few of my photos. It's a lot easier when the background is plain and simple. If you have a lot of things going on, it's harder to replicate it, but there is a way on Photoshop. Okay, enough about size. Let's talk about the carousel feature on Instagram. Something that's great about the carousel feature, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is where you can post multiple photos on a Instagram post. You guys probably know what I'm talking about, but the great thing about a carousel is if somebody swipes past your photo on their feed and they end up going back to Instagram later, your carousel will actually move to the second slide and show them that photo. So when you are posting, make sure to post at least two to three quality photos in that first few slides, just to make sure that if somebody does scroll past and go back to revisit that photo in their feed, they will see another version of that photo and maybe get them to interact with that a second time depending on how many times they've seen it. Maybe you have one to three different poses that you wanted to post of the same kind of photo shoot that you took and then after that you can either share a behind the scenes, an editing tutorial, quotes, anything that supports what you're sharing in the caption or maybe even a product shot if you're doing a collaboration that will help kind of present valuable content and allow your Instagram audience to engage with you more if you have more to talk about. Just make sure that the first few photos are an eye-catching photo so that when somebody does scroll through, they're going to see your kind of money shots first off and then they can scroll through and see the rest of the content. Okay, before we keep going, if you're liking this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more creator tips. 
Okay, so moving in to timing. This is something that is talked about in different ways. Some people say that there's an average kind of posting time per day. I personally think it depends on your audience and your account. So to find out the best posting times per day and what days of the week are good for your account, head into your Instagram insights. So this is going to pop up if you have a business account or a creator account with Instagram. So you're just gonna click the insights button, then you're gonna go into audience and then you're gonna scroll all the way down and you can see down in this section called followers it will actually show you the days of the week by days and you can tap on it and get the numbers sometimes if a little bit more even and sometimes it can be a little bit scattered this just gives you a better idea of what you're looking at and when you're how many followers are on on that day then you can specify the data to hours and see at what hours on what day are there the most followers so today is monday and if i tap this here i have 778 active followers on at 3 p.m. so that is when I'm gonna post today. Previously when I had a smaller amount of followers and audience it told me that 9 o'clock was the best time to post. Because I'm looking at the insights on Instagram of when to post it's telling me now that I should be posting midday instead of at the end of the day. I always refer back to it every time I post to see what the best time is to post. Okay, next we're gonna talk about captions. So this is where I'm talking about bringing content that's valuable to your audience that makes them want to save your posts more often. And as we know, saves bring your post up in the algorithm and allow more people on your feed to see it. So when I say make your caption valuable, I mean not just putting a one-liner or a pun, but maybe adding to that or doing something different. So what I started to do is I actually type up my captions on a Word document just so I can go really fast. I used to do it on my notes app in my phone. I feel like when I type it in on my computer, I can really focus in on what I want to talk about and bring really valuable and detailed content. So what I like to do is share tips, things that someone can actually save the post and refer back to in the future. So for example, today I am posting a bunch of Instagram sticker story search search terms, try saying that three times fast, Instagram sticker story search terms. People can type them in and find a whole new world of stickers for their Instagram stories. So I shared a whole list in my caption and then told them in the bottom to make sure to save this post if they want to reference back to it in the future. So not only am I giving them the valuable content that they'll want to save for, but reminding them at the end that they should save the content as well. And then after that, I will also put a question just so if they want to interact and engage on that post, they have a question to refer back to instead of just commenting, you know, cute, all those kind of simple comments, which there's nothing wrong with them, but just to kind of get your audience more engaged than usual. So in the beginning of the caption on the top, this is the kind of text that your audience is going to see first before they click open for more. I like to put a line that's really going to grab their attention. Maybe it's let's talk about Instagram story stickers or upgrade your story stickers or just something that's going to let them know that if you open this, you're going to get some valuable content that might be better for you to know. And then it kind of motivates them or pushes them to open your caption to read the whole thing. So like I mentioned, all of this, creating that valuable caption is going to lead your audience to save your posts and getting saves is really super helpful in pushing your photo out and boosting it in the Instagram algorithm. So make sure to provide something that your audience will want to save your post for. Last thing for talking about captions, I think something that helps your audience read your caption more is to space it out. So there's this one website that I like to use that helps me to space out my caption just to kind of section it off into paragraphs and one-liners making it easier to read. And then I also like to use emojis to kind of mark the different points that I'm trying to make. And I can definitely see an increase in saves when I do this, as well as engagement and genuine engagement on what I'm talking about in the caption. So be consistent with it and you'll be sure to see some growth 
on your Instagram account. Next up, we're gonna get into engagement tips. So the first thing I wanna say is every time you post an Instagram, make sure to share that post to your stories. Not everyone might see that post when you post it. It depends on how much they've interacted with your photo, but usually your stories will pop up on the Instagram stories bar. So make sure to push your content out that way. Say, oh, I have a new post. Maybe share a little snippet of the caption. Maybe sharing that one-liner at the top of what you're going to be sharing in the caption. So for example, my post today, I might put on my story, Instagram sticker search ideas in the caption. That might push them to click on the post and read the caption as well and save it, creating a boost in the algorithm. So right before you post, you wanna make sure you're engaging with your feed. Maybe follow a few new people that are in your niche that you are interested in. Don't just follow to follow. Make sure you're engaging with their content as well. And this kind of shows Instagram that you're active. Also, after you post, you wanna make sure you engage as well. Engage with your feed, but also engage with your post. Make sure you're commenting back on every comment you get on your post. It shows Instagram that you're active, that you're engaging. It also helps to boost your engagement rate on your posts because it's showing Instagram that there's a lot more comments on your post than if you weren't to comment on every post. So let's say you get 50 comments and you comment every one of them, it's now gonna show that you have a hundred comments It's now gonna show that you have 100 comments on your Instagram post instead of just 50. And this also looks good for if you're trying to build a engagement rate for your brand collaborations and things like that. It also helps to build a genuine relationship with your Instagram audience. It also might motivate them to comment on your posts every time because they know that you're gonna answer them as well as maybe go check out their posts that they just posted. So it kind of creates that genuine relationship that you definitely want on your Instagram. Instagram account. Just to recap, make sure you comment back on every comment that you get on your Instagram posts and definitely engage before and after you post your Instagram. Okay, lastly, I'm going to share with you one more tip and this is something I've done maybe once or twice and it's to ask your audience to shout out your newest photo on their story in exchange for you to share their Instagram photo. So it also, again, pushes your photo out to more people. It's pushing your photo out to their audience and you're also creating that genuine genuine relationship with these people who support your posts and you support them back. Okay, you guys, so that is the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more tips from me, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know down below if there's any videos that you have a request of for creator tips and also go check out my Instagram to see what content I create and also maybe check out the examples of captions that I've posted in the past just so you get an idea of what I'm talking about when I say share a valuable caption to your audience when you post an Instagram. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!